Welcome. I want to start my talk with a little experiment. Please take a look at your left hand and compare your ring finger and your index finger. And did you know that the size ratio of these two fingers predicts financial success? So if your ring finger is longer than your index finger, your chances are higher that you are more successful at the stock exchange. Now I see some people pulling on the ring finger. <laughs> it does not work. <laughs> others are looking at the neighbor. <laughs> Why was this such long? <laughs> and others are thinking, what the hell is the guy telling me here? <laughs> well, but I, I promise you, this is real science. Uh, researchers from University of Cambridge, they found in a study that this so-called second to fourth digit ratio really predicts success among high-frequency financial traders. Why? Well, the explanation is, is easy. It has to do with the exposure of hormones you got as a fetus in the womb of your mother. And if you had that certain finger index, then you had a higher exposure to androgens like testosterones, which correlates to risk-taking, and we need some risk-taking in financial trading. Why am I telling you this? Uh, well, for some, I, I hope it was some motivating information. <laughs> for these with long fingers, <laughs> long ring fingers. And uh, all the others, I hope they had a neuronal firework taking place in their heads. And this is because of curiosity. You're longing for new knowledge, and I gave you an important information uh, in combination with the knowledge gap. You didn't know how your finger index is, and then you wanted to know the answer. Then a region in your brain was activated that is called the nucleus caudatus. And this is a center where information, where knowledge is processed and is well linked to the dopaminergic system, so where dopamines are coming into your brain. So I hope you feel good <laughs> due to dopamines, due to curiosity. And what's happening in your brain is an evolutionary engine, an evolutionary motor for the new, for ideas, for innovation. And it was not always like this. It happened 2.5 million years ago when our human brain developed and made that motor working and activated it. And this is the reason why we are sitting in a well-tempered lecture hall and not in the caves, and why you are listening to TED Talks. I hope you're not here because of the good snacks. And it brought us all these wonderful tools we have, um, beginning with the hand axe until the computer mouse. It's why we use our intelligence to create artificial intelligence. And it's so important, it's so much more important for organizations and for individuals. It's a very underestimated resource as we do have so many challenges, so many complex problems in our world, we need much more curiosity, we need to activate it much better at the workplace, in our organizations and in our societies. And as I'm working for an innovation consultancy, I wanted to understand curiosity better. And we found that there's a blind spot in innovation research. We analyze processes very well, and now the best process to come to an innovation. But if you don't have curiosity at the start, you won't have a brilliant idea at the end. So in the first study I wrote with a research fellow named Carl Norton, we analyzed that work-related curiosity. It's also called epistemic curiosity. And this is the one that leads you to new information, new knowledge that makes you happy to solve complex problems. And it has nothing to do with sensationalism, voyeurism, the so-called social 
curiosity which lets you be interested in what's happening in your neighbor's bedroom, but it has nothing to do with this work-related curiosity. And at the same time, the Darmstadt-based Science and Technology Corporation, Merck, also did a study about that work-related curiosity. And they asked 3,000 employees around the globe, in China, in the US, and in Germany, how curious the workers are and if curiosity is nurtured in their organizations. And the results were alarming. Only 20% of workers self-identified as curious. That does not mean that 80% are not curious. Probably many of them think curiosity is only something for the artists or for, for the people from the traffic design department. More probably, it's that curiosity is not nurtured in their organizations. And the results allow that conclusion. Only 9% of that study said, we feel that the organizational culture is extremely supportive of curiosity. And even if many leaders claim that they want to have innovation and creativity in a company, behind the scenes they are afraid that curiosity leads to higher risk or inefficiency. Or they are afraid that it questions their authority because people ask too many uncomfortable questions. But it's worse for an organization. The positive effects are very convincing. You have less group conflicts in teams with a higher curiosity in the team. People are listening better to each other and develop more empathy. People, the leaders and the employees, are better in adapting to uncertain market conditions and external pressure. And if there is something certain, then it's that the uncertainty is growing in our world. So it's really worth to foster curiosity at all levels. And the good thing is you can train people in curiosity. You can make people more curious. We all got it by birth, but in school and during our life, we lost probably a little bit of it. But we can activate it again by specific trainings. And that was the goal of the Curiosity Council Merck founded some years ago to better understand curiosity and to better train people in curiosity. And over the years, we developed specific methods and trainings to foster curiosity. And you can train people in these four dimensions of curiosity. Based on a questionnaire, you can find out how strong one person is in one of these four dimensions. So let me briefly introduce these four dimensions. It's joyous exploration, which means gaining pleasure by seeking out new information and knowledge the subsequent joy of learning and growing. It's deprivation sensitivity. If you recognize that there's a knowledge gap and you want to close that gap, which gives you a sense of relief. It's openness to people's ideas. Uh, quite often, we love our own ideas a little bit more than these of others, but curious people do. And there's stress tolerance, an interesting result that curious people embrace the anxiety that comes with the uncertain and with the unknown. So they have a much better stress management. So I bring you three good advices to increase your curiosity and that one of your organization. If there's a new idea needed in, in a company, quite often a brainstorming is done. Who's doing brainstorming here? Please, hands up. Oh, most of you, I know it makes fun, it's uh, the energy in the room, <laughs> in the team, but it delivers poor results. We know that, that since decades of research, it's a method from the 1930s and it never worked well. <laughs> so there are better options to do. And uh, one very good and effective method, curiosity tactic, is the question storming. 
So instead of brainstorming ideas, you're brainstorming questions. You have a challenge and you collect as many questions as you can, at least 30. The best is to do it in the team. And it starts with one person of a team writing down on the flipboard one question, then the second one is writing down a question, and then the third one, and so on and so on. And after collecting 30 questions, at least, each team member prioritizes the three questions he or she thinks are the most interesting ones. And then the group is going into a discussion. And you will see that in the questions, very interesting, unconventional solutions are hidden. So, for example, if the challenge is how can we reduce carbon dioxide emissions by half in our organization, you could write down a question like, why should we reduce carbon dioxide emissions? What if we transform carbon dioxide into something valuable for nature? which is exactly what companies like Solar Foods are doing, a Finnish startup that transforms carbon dioxide into a protein named solein by harvesting carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So the most stupid questions are the best ones, and this is why Paul Bennett, chief creative officer of IDEO, a very famous innovation agency, says, I position myself relentlessly as an idiot. The second advice I want to give you is hire for curiosity. It's the easiest way to increase curiosity in organizations because you have less work if you hire curious people from the beginning then you don't have to make them curious afterwards. It's logic. Um, a good example to attract curious minds is this example here. If you don't feel a trust like now, it's because you don't understand it. Well, some might understand it. It's a um, recruiting ad that was built up in the Silicon Valley at a highway. And these who understood it, who solved that puzzle, came to a second puzzle on a website. And when they also solved that puzzle, they got the information, great, you made up until here, please send us your resume, we should go into a conversation. It was the ad that was published by, by Google, a company that always have a strong focus on curiosity and finding curious people. And we can learn from the founders, Larry Page and Serge Brin, who took a strong focus in job interviews to find the curious ones. So if you don't have money for fancy advertising campaigns, you can also focus on asking curiosity questions in job interviews. And I really love the one the two founders always asked job attendants. That was, what would you ask yourself if you were us? And we use that question also in our job interviews. It works quite well add that question with other curiosity questions like, if your new job title would be Chief Destruction Officer, what actions would you take? So don't go too much for formal qualification. Find out who the curious characters are. And the last advice, try out something you hate. A very good curiosity advice. So if you are a passionate video gamer and you never leave your home, go into the forest hiking. If you're a bodybuilder, try out knitting. It's exactly what happened in an experiment of American psychologists, and the participants were asked to do an activity of which they think they will definitely do not like. So this 18-year-old bodybuilder did knitting, and he saw that it had positive effects. He came into a meditative mood, and he got more control about his body, which was good for posing. And many of these people who thought they would hate that activity stayed in doing this activity. So curiosity can make your life richer, more interesting. And even if your curiosity does not achieve the goal on the first try, remember the complete saying of curiosity kill the cat. The whole saying is 
Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. So if you think artificial intelligence takes you out of race, curiosity will bring you back. AI may deliver many answers, but not the questions. So stay curious. Ask more questions. Turn the next chapter with your curiosity. Do something what you hate and enjoy your life. Thank you very much.